Hello and good day. Today is Wednesday, November 13, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 7 a.m. local time in the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, Honduras, and Nicaragua, where close monitoring of Invest 99 is essential. Within the next 48 hours, this system is expected to develop into a tropical cyclone and is projected to track near or over northern Honduras and eventually move across parts of Belize or the Yucatan Peninsula. Our primary concern with this future cyclone is the heavy rainfall expected across northern Honduras, northeastern Nicaragua, and coastal areas of Quintana Roo and Belize, as well as Costa Rica and Panama, with extreme rainfall totals that could lead to flooding and landslides. In the infrared satellite image, we can see that this tropical wave continues to show signs of cyclonic organization and should soon develop into a tropical depression as it moves west-southwest. This morning, we have a stronger consensus that the trajectory will be similar to the one I've drawn on this image. At 7 a.m., the National Hurricane Center increased the likelihood of cyclonic development to 90% over the next 48 hours, making the formation of Tropical Depression or Tropical Storm Sarah seem imminent. For this reason, we will continue with this special coverage. Let's look at the latest model projections. Overall, there's good consensus that in the next 72 hours, Tropical Storm Sarah will move slowly west-southwest, nearing northeastern Honduras and maintaining a slow pace through the weekend. One critical aspect we'll be monitoring is whether the circulation center makes landfall in Honduras or stays over the Caribbean Sea, as this will significantly affect the storm's strength by the time it reaches northern Belize or the Yucatan Peninsula. If the center remains over water, it could intensify into a major hurricane before reaching Quintana Roo. However, if it takes a more southerly track and moves over Honduras, we might see a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane when it reaches the Yucatan Peninsula. Unfortunately, the probability of the cyclone approaching or passing very close to Honduras's northern coast is increasing, which poses a significant flood risk for northern and central Honduras. Shortly, I'll show projected rainfall totals for the next five days. With a better consensus on its likely track near Honduras's coastline, its intensification may be somewhat limited. Today, intensity models generally suggest that it could strengthen into a Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane, though a Category 4 hurricane cannot be ruled out. Let's look at the latest global models. Starting with the GFS model, it forecasts Tropical Storm Sarah forming northeast of Honduras by tomorrow afternoon. Between Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the storm moves slowly in this region while strengthening. In the latest run, the GFS strengthens this system into a Category 3 or 4 hurricane by Sunday morning, as the circulation center remains over the Caribbean and does not reach Honduras's northern coast. By early next week, the GFS model projects a west-northwest movement, eventually moving over Quintana Roo and the Yucatan Peninsula between Monday and Tuesday. Long term, it suggests a track towards the northeast by Wednesday and Thursday, threatening southern Florida, northern Bahamas, and western Cuba. In this scenario, Rainfall totals of 350 to 200 mm are expected, affecting Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. Additionally, when the circulation is northeast of Nicaragua, moisture flow from the Pacific will bring heavy rains to western Panama and much of Costa Rica, with totals above 300 to 400 mm over the next five days. Meanwhile, the north and northeast coast of Honduras could see rainfall totals above 500 mm according to the latest GFS projections. Now, the latest European model run shows a similar pattern keeping the system moving slowly toward northeastern Honduras throughout the weekend. Although the European model strengthens Invest 99 into a Category 2 or 3 hurricane, intensification is limited by its proximity to Honduras. Like the GFS, by Monday and Tuesday, it has a Category 2 or 3 hurricane making landfall in Quintana Roo and moving across the Yucatan Peninsula before taking a northeastward turn between Tuesday and Wednesday, impacting southern or central Florida. This scenario aligns closely with the GFS model. Here are the expected rainfall accumulations over the next five days for Costa Rica and Panama. 200 to 300 mm, northern Honduras and eastern Yucatan Peninsula, 200 to 300 mm, and the Cayman Islands and Jamaica, 150 to 200 mm. Other models, like the German model, project this system strengthening near Honduras's northern coast, with a Category 2 hurricane hitting northern Belize. The UK model, with a slightly more northerly trajectory, shows a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane impacting northeastern Yucatan. Overall, it's quite evident that in the coming three to four days, this cyclone will move near northeastern Honduras, strengthening into a hurricane, and eventually shift toward parts of Belize or the Yucatan Peninsula. Although there is still uncertainty about the exact landfall point, regardless of the track, a catastrophic rain event is expected for northern Honduras. 
As the risk of impact rises for the Yucatan and Belize, it decreases for Western Cuba, with the system likely heading toward Florida. Analyzing projections from various global models, the most probable path is close to northeastern Honduras and then towards central and southern Quintana Roo. We'll stay vigilant over the coming days to better understand the precise track and to see how strong this system becomes before making landfall. By early next week, the system will likely be moving somewhere between Tampa and Key West, heading northeast. Residents in central and southern Florida and the northern Bahamas should closely monitor the future tropical storm and Hurricane Sarah. That's all for this morning's forecast update here on Hurricane Info. I'll continue with this special coverage, recording at least two videos per day, so the next video will be recorded in the afternoon or early evening. To make sure you don't miss any updates, please check if you're subscribed to my channel. If not, subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications when we upload new videos. Well, that's it for now. See you in the afternoon.